Elementor, what is it and why should you care? Well, basically, Elementor is a drag and drop page builder for WordPress. It's completely visual and it allows you to design and create websites even if you have no prior coding experience or knowledge. So this whole video is just gonna be like a quick getting started guide for Elementor and how you can use Elementor with starter templates to get a beautiful website up and running in just a few clicks. And honestly, I'm willing to bet we could get this done in under 10 minutes. So let's put 10 minutes on the timer. Let's get started and see if we can do the Elementor Quick Start Guide in less than 10 minutes. All right, so let's get started with using Elementor. The first step is to install the Elementor plugin onto your WordPress website. How are you gonna do that? Well, you're gonna head to the plugin section of your WordPress dashboard, click add new and search for Elementor. Once you find it, click install and then click activate. You don't need to make an account or anything if you're only going to be using the free version. Next, I'm actually gonna recommend installing the Starter Templates plugin. It's used on nearly two websites because it provides hundreds of one-click templates that you can use for absolutely free. Once that's installed, you will have a vast collection of professionally designed templates at your disposal. It's a really good way to jumpstart your website's look and feel if you don't exactly know what you're going for. All right, so now that we have everything set up, let's start editing within Elementor. You have two options to access the Elementor editor. Either click the Edit with Elementor button in the WordPress admin bar, or you can go to Pages in the WordPress dashboard, choose Choose the page you want to edit and then click edit with Elementor. Now once you're in the Elementor editor, you might notice a prompt to turn on Flexbox. Flexbox is a feature that enhances the layout options that you have within Elementor. Click that link, turn it on. Keep in mind that this may be enabled by default in the future, but at the time of recording this, it's not, so just make sure to turn it on. And you'll find this in the experimental features menu. This is something you're gonna wanna keep an eye on. These features often introduce either new functionalities or enhancements that can help you take your website to the next level. So while they may be in their experimental phase, they can provide interesting opportunities for you and your website, so it might be be something worth checking in on every now and again. Now, before we start editing the page, let's talk about containers. You might know them if you've used this before as sections, but basically a container is a section of your page that holds content. Widgets are the building blocks of your page. They can be anything from text blocks to images, buttons, or even complex elements like forms or galleries. Now in Elementor, widgets are the drag and drop building blocks that will allow you to add and customize different elements to your page. There are a ton of them to experiment and play around Around with, but the most important, I think, are the header, container, button, text, and image. With these building blocks, you can build pretty much any site that you come across online in your day to day. The container widget almost acts like the house that all the other widgets live in. It helps organize and group different sections of your web page. So, by adjusting the container settings, like background color, padding, or margin, you can control the overall appearance and spacing of the content within it. And by the way, if you don't know what padding and margin are, don't worry. I'll explain that in just a minute. Now, the button widget allows you to create interactive buttons on your web page. You can customize its text, style, size, and colors, or add actions and links to it. Buttons like this are commonly used for calls to action, like sign up, learn more, buy now, things like that that are geared to guide users towards specific actions. Now, the text widget enables you to add and format text content on your web page. Through this, you can customize the font, size, color, alignment, and any other text properties using the text widget settings. You're gonna use this for things like paragraphs, lists, and any other text that you need on your design. Now the image widget allows you to insert and customize images on your web page. You can do this by either uploading images from your computer or choose from the media library. The image widget provides options for controlling the image's size, alignment, borders, and all the other visual aspects of it. Now, if you're a photographer, this would be useful for showing your pictures, a graphic designer, your illustrations, or your logo work, or if you run an e-commerce store, then it could be useful for showing product photos. Now to use these widgets within Elementor, you're simply gonna drag and drop them from the widget panel onto the container within the Elementor editor, or I guess into. After that, you can customize their settings, including, like I said, the text, the style, the layout, and the interactivity using everything that you're gonna find on the left panel. Elementor's controls and options for each widget are pretty intuitive, so I think you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. But now that you have the basics down, let's explore the editing options within Elementor. On the left panel, you'll find the editing options for each element. 
When you select a container, you'll see the Edit Container tab, which provides options for layout, style, and advanced settings. You're gonna to wanna to take some time to familiarize yourself with these settings because this is what allows you to customize the appearance and the interactions and behaviors of everything within each container. Under the Layout tab, you can choose between boxed or full width designs. You can adjust the spacing. In the Style tab, you can fine tune the visual aspects such as the colors, fonts, and backgrounds that you'll see on your web page. And in the Advanced tab, you have additional options for the more advanced users like padding and margin. I told you we'd come back to it. So what exactly is padding and margin? So imagine your content is like a picture frame. Padding is the matting that goes inside the frame, creating space between the picture, which is your content, and the frame's edges, which is your container. It adds breathing room to make sure that the picture doesn't touch the frame directly. On the other hand, margin is like the empty space on the wall that surrounds the frame itself. It defines how much space there is between the frame, or your container, and other objects nearby. It helps give the design balance and prevent it from feeling too crowded. All right, let's talk about responsiveness. So Elementor provides a responsive mode that allows you to preview and adjust your design for different devices. It's essential to ensure that your website looks great on mobile, tablets, and desktops, so don't forget to test your design in responsive mode before publishing. And speaking of things to remember, remember to save your changes regularly by clicking the update button to ensure that your progress is saved. If you wanna see how your website looks to visitors, you can use the preview button to get a glimpse of the final result before publishing. Lastly, let's talk about the history and the nav feature. So first of all, history. Elementor keeps track of your editing history. It allows you to undo and redo changes as needed. It's helpful if you make a mistake or if you're trying to backtrack to a previous design state, maybe you got carried away changing colors and now you just want it all undone, you can find that within your history and click it and you're good to go. Now in that bar you're gonna find right down here, I like to drag that all the way over to the right and pin it there so that I can always see it. Now, it looks empty right here, but as you fill up a page, you'll see that it kind of follows the natural hierarchy of the website. It just makes it easier for you to navigate and find different elements within your website that you're trying to fix or edit or change. Now I'm gonna take everything I just talked about, bring it into a starter template and show you how easy it is with these building blocks as a foundation to build out your own custom website using Elementor Elementor and starter templates. All right, so here we are in our WordPress dashboard. The first thing we're going to do is go to our installed plugins. We're going to go to starter templates and I'm going to pick Love Nature. There's a ton of really well-designed, like more niche down uh, templates that you can choose from, like this web designer one, this fashion portfolio one, this politician one, but I find that nature is kind of the best neutral starting point that you can take in whatever direction you want. So you can upload your logo here if you want to. I'm gonna show you how to do that later, along with changing all of these uh, global colors. So skip and continue. You can, like I said, change your global colors here, but I'm gonna show you how to do that later. Submit and build my website. And there we go. It took 12 seconds, but now we have this whole website. So we're gonna view. And here we are. All right, now let's show you how to customize this website. So we're gonna go up here to edit with Elementor. So the first thing we're gonna do is just change the pictures and the text. I'm not gonna change the button color right now because I'm gonna show you how to do that globally later. So if I wanted to change this background, I'm gonna click these dots. I'm gonna to go to style and I'm going to go to, let's do a slideshow. So I'm gonna add images. Now I already have all of my images uploaded, but if you wanted to do that, you would just drag and drop them here or select files through this. So let's pick some ones that I know are wider shots like that, 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 and that. Create new gallery. And let's see, do I like the order that this is in? Yeah, it's a good order. Insert. <clears throat> So here it is now, this is gonna be my background. I like to keep it on infinite loop just so that way like when it hits the last one, it's gonna go back to the first one. Uh, duration is in milliseconds. So this is gonna be about five seconds. I'm gonna change that to, let's do three and a half seconds. I like the fade transition. As far as background size goes, you can change it. I think it looks best on default. And background position, you can change it to center, 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 left, but I'm going to keep it on default for there as well. Uh, Ken Burns is like a slow zoom, so if you turn that on, you'll see it kind of zooms in. You can change it to zoom out if you want. I like the zoom in effects. Now, the only other thing I want to do 
is background overlay because I want to put I just want to make it a little bit darker so that the text pops a little bit more and you can see as you drag it it's going to make it you know you're just changing it's basically a layer of black that you put over it and then you're changing the opacity right so I want to make it just a little bit darker so that the text really pops perfect all right, so now I'm gonna change the text. So let's just say, let's delete that and just do like, and then you can change this. I'm just gonna delete that. And so here we have this now. What I don't like is how close it is to the top. So I'm just gonna put a spacer in there. And there you go, now you have changed the hero section to be more fitting to what it is that I do. If you wanted this to be a little thinner, you would go to edit container and then the minimum height. You can adjust from there. And if you wanted to move any of the content, this is how you would do it. I'm gonna keep it at how it was. So now if we go down to this section again, you could change this to say like what I do. And let's say I'm gonna change this picture with that. Change that one, that. Change that one with that. <clears throat> now, one thing to keep in mind is that because I took all of these photos, I was able to crop them all the same way. So if you're sourcing photos, if you hire a photographer or you hire a graphic designer, it's important to make sure that they are all the same size. Otherwise, you know, if this one's really small and a rectangle, but this one is a tall rectangle and this one's just a square, it's, it's gonna look bad. So then we'll go down here, change this and say like, live photography, music videos, and content creation, we can keep that. So now we have this testimonial page and you'll see again, it's all very much the same, right? Once you understand the building blocks of it, everything kind of falls into place. So like this, this is just an image. You can replace it with anything you want. So if I wanted to replace it with this headshot for some reason, I could. Now I can either hit control Z to undo that or I can go into history click that and it's good. So maybe if you have like an email from a client thanking you or just like a review that you have on Google, you can copy that, paste that here. So this is an about section. So actually this is a perfect opportunity. So if I go here to choose image, I can upload files, select files, and I should have a photo in here. Yep. Select, boom, there it is. You can change this to fit you, fit whatever your business is. If we go to find out more, this is likely going to link us to the about section. So actually in Elementor, if you go to link on the button and you just type about, it should find the about page. And then you can change the alignment of the button. I like it to the left. And then we're just going to click update to save that. And there it is. So same thing down here. If I wanna change the background, I'm gonna right click edit container. And for this one, I actually wanna do a video. So we're gonna click video and then I have a video link. And there it is. And then same thing, background overlay. I just want to make it a little darker so that the text really pops off of it when I make it white. And there it is. That's pretty much how you can customize your whole website using Elementor. Now, the only things that you can't edit within Elementor are your header and your footers. Now, once you're back in your dashboard, you're gonna go to appearances and customize. So to edit your header, you're gonna go to your header builder. And these are the components that make up the header. So if you wanna change your logo, you're gonna change that here. You can change the button over here. So if you wanted that to say like contact, instead of the phone number, and then you could link that to either the telephone or you can link it to another page. So like, so then you would just have to get the link to the contact page, paste that there, easy. So that's where you would go to change like your logo and this header. And in addition to the header, this is also where you will build the footer, which is right down here. And then if you go to global and then colors. So if I wanted to take this yellow and say, make it red. There you go. And then you'll notice once you hover, it still turns to the other yellow. So that's this. So we'll just take that and make it a darker red. 
and then you'll notice as you go through the website everything that was that yellow color is now going to be this new red color and that'll be universal through the whole website and then the last thing i want to go over is just responsiveness so if we go back to our homepage, edit with elementor all right so if we remember we're going to go down here click responsive mode so we are currently in desktop so let's go to tablet scroll down everything looks not so good so we know now that we have to edit this in tablet so that if somebody looks at this on tablet it doesn't look like this so we're just gonna drag that out and much better down if we want to change this change it using one of the global colors as well all right, now I have a feeling because that looked a little odd on tablet, it's gonna look odd on mobile. So let's, scrolling down, same old, same old. That looks perfectly fine on mobile, but that's the importance of checking, right? Because if it looks fine on mobile and it looks fine on desktop, that doesn't mean it's gonna look great on tablet. So for the sake of keeping this just down to a quick start guide, that is how you will check for mobile responsiveness. And there it is. That is how you build a website using Elementor and starter templates. It took what? 15 minutes maybe to record and that's with me stuttering and accidentally messing up what i'm trying to say so there is not a doubt in my mind that you can do this in under 10 minutes once you have the basics down and again as you saw everything is the same building blocks and it's all click and drag you see exactly what you're going to get as you do it this is to me the easiest way to build a professional and beautiful looking website with no coding knowledge or experience so thank you so much for watching this video i hope it helped if you want to see anything else in terms of element mentor tutorials let us know down in the comments below subscribe if you haven't already leave the video a like and i will see you in the next one